In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the second part of Laplace transform. So I'll talk about some other properties related to Laplace transform. Okay, so let's start with the first property of Laplace transform. So first one we're talking about for exponential function, what is uh, the associated Laplace transform. Let's for example, give a function f of t, which is uh, e to the a sub t. So here a is uh, a constant okay so which means this can be a real number a real value or it can be imagined even imaginary so it doesn't mean it's always real so for any constant uh, number so ft is given by e to the a sub t uh, for a is greater than equal to zero and ft is zero for t is less than zero so the L of ft is the Laplace transform ft is 1 over s minus a. Okay. All right, so next we have a sinusoidal function. Okay, so for this one, you can use definition uh, to directly figure out why this is the case. Okay. Um, sinusoidal function, uh, which is ft is equal to sine w. So here we use sine. I'll talk about a cosine wt later on. If ft is sine wt and t is positive, here w is positive, a real number, okay, because this w means the frequency. Uh, ft is 0 when t is less than or equal to 0. So the Laplace transform of ft is w divided by x squared plus w squared, okay. So here we'll talk about how we, how, why that's the case, okay. We still use the definition, okay. Uh, definition says the Laplace transform at function of t is integration of 0 from 0 to infinity e minus t times this function of t. Okay, this should be ft over here, dt. Now, because for when t within 0 to infinity, ft is just sine wt, so we replace ft by some sine wt over here. Alright, to do that, we have to use uh, uh, this, this relationship, which is sine wt is e to the jwt minus e to the minus jwt divided by 2j. Now here j is uh, j is square root of minus 1. Okay. Alright. So if you don't know why this is the case, you can check online. So there's a problem talking about how do you compute the sine by sine w into exponential form. So once we have that one, you just have to replace this sine wt by e j w t minus e minus j w t divided by 2j. So that's exactly what we have over here. So we plug it in over here. Um, so then we just put the 2j because 2j is a constant. One of 2j is constant. We moved out, outside. So it's 1 divided by 2j integrate from 0 to infinity. So now we just have this form. So we have, we can do the product individually. So it's e minus st times e times jwt minus e minus st times e minus j uh, wt. Okay. Now then we separate it into two uh, integrations. So we keep the 1 divided by 2j uh, here and change. And then we divide the 2. Okay. One is the uh, integration from 0 to infinity e minus st times e j wt dt. The remaining, the next one is minus, we put the minus sign uh, in front of the integration. So the minus integration from 0 to infinity e to the minus t times e j w t times dt. Okay. This one we use the previous product I mentioned over here. Okay, so this one over here. So um, the difference here is this will be j w t. Okay, remember pay attention to here. So for e a t, so it's a minus. Okay, so this one you change the sign. Okay, this is a, pay attention to this sign. So this is a minus sign. Okay, this is not a plus sign. Okay, so when I have here e minus t e j w t, so this is e j w t, so I have a one over s minus j w. This is not a plus. Okay, this is minus. This one it become plus because it's minus over here, so it become plus. Okay, so it's one divided by s plus j w. So then I can put them together. So I still keep the first one the same. So one divided by two j, I keep it over here. So this one I have to. Uh, this guy times this guy, right? Put them together, right? So S minus JW times S plus JW. So this becomes S plus JW minus S minus JW, okay? Now, keep the same thing over here. So this guy, because S minus S will cancel out, and JW minus minus JW, so it becomes minus minus become plus. So JW plus JW is 2JW. 
this guy is the product this guy will be s squared minus jws okay that's the this guy times s plus um uh this guy times this is uh let me hold on hold on here so so s squared so this guy this guy times this guy is s squared and this guy times this guy is plus jws okay and this guy plus this guy times this is minus so minus jw times s and this is minus jw times jw okay so then this guy cancel out and this guy is j times j remember j is here right so it means j squared is negative one so this is minus j squared w so this is negative one negative one negative is a plus so it's s squared plus omega over there. omega square over here so this 2j and the 2j they all cancel out so it will be w divided by s squared plus w squared so that's why the Laplace transform this ft sine sort of function is just be given by w divided by s squared plus w squared so similarly we can also have the Laplace transform for a cosine function over here so its Laplace transform is just lft is s divided by s squared plus w squared so the denominator will be the same the difference will be the numerator so for a sine sort of function sine function will be w for the cosine function it will be just s now here we just use a property instead of it so we we do the same way as i mentioned over here the only difference is is we use a property the cosine property over here okay that's what it, that's the difference all right so that's for the sinus order function okay now let's take a look at the third one um, which is second order differential which is f double derivative of t okay which is the derivative of f dot t okay so in the previous video i talked about what is f dot t now this is talk about double dot t so the Laplace transform f double dot t is s squared fs minus s f zero minus f dot zero so remember what so pay attention to the difference between the capital f and this uh, little f so this capital f over here fs is l f t okay this f little f it is just what the original function so this f zero here means one f t when you set t to zero and here this one means you have f dot zero means f dot t so you take a derivative of f with respect to t and then you set t to zero for example if my f t is t squared okay so f zero is uh, let me make a little count. So let's say plus two t. Let's do this way. Okay. So f zero is um, you just change t squared plus two t, and then you set t to be zero. So zero squared is still zero. Two times zero is still zero. So this is still zero. So f dot derivative of zero, which is you take a derivative of the original function is uh, t squared plus two t with respect to t. So the derivative of t squared with respect to t is two t. The derivative of two t with respect to t is two. So you write a t is zero. So two times zero is zero plus two, so this is two. So that's how we how to figure out these two values. Okay. Of course this fs over here, we basically have to figure out what is the L of t, right? This is fs. It's just L of t squared. Okay, I don't so you can check the table, okay, you can figure out what the value is. And what is the form of the L of t squared? Okay. Okay. The reason we can uh, how we figure out this uh, relationship is remember in the previous lecture I talked about uh, why the um, here in the previous I talked about the L let's write up here L f dot t is s f s minus f zero okay I talk about why that's the case because you basically so we use the definition and you move the derivative to the right hand side okay in the previous video i talk about it so the same idea applies for the second order uh, the second order derivative differential so you do the same approach you just do it twice that's why you have f dot zero and f zero over here okay i don't want to repeat over here so you follow the same uh, similar idea in the first order differential okay so let's now let's talk about one example that you can use some of the product i mentioned in the in the previous uh, in the previous video and this video to sort of figure out the Laplace transform of a function okay so here we talk about a pulse function the pulse function ft is defined as this 
when t is greater than 1 is given by 0 is 0 when t is uh, within 0 and 1 is 1 when t is less than 0 is also 0 so it's just you have a you have a pulse which means you are only within an interval between 0 and 1 is defined so it's, you, your ft is 1 otherwise it's just 0 so you got a pulse over there okay so how do I compute the goal is of here is to compute the Laplace transform of ft so how do I compute that okay so one way I can do this one is I try to write this one as two functions and the function I know how to compute very easily okay because I can use a property um, is l f 1 t plus f 2 t because this plus can also be the minus is it can also put a minus over here it's the l of f 1 t plus or minus l f 2 t Okay. If these two these two are really easy to figure out, then it's easy to to compute the, this Laplace transform. Well, that's the key idea we're going to use. Now, one one way we can write, rewrite f t is f t can be written as u t and u t minus one. So u t here is a called step function. What this means is u t is given by this. Is one is t greater than zero, and this is zero is t less than zero. Okay, so u t minus one is this. We basically move is one is t greater than equal to one and zero when t is equal to zero. So it's just uh, less than one. Sorry. So you just move this one to the right hand side. If I draw this picture like this, let me draw the picture looks like this. So my u t is like this. You have step. You need step function. It's called step function. And my u uh, t minus one is this. Yeah, you can see if the, I use red line minus the blue line, so it will be just the the, the pulse function. Okay. So if you write this one, I can see it's L F T is just the L, like I mentioned over here, is L U T minus L U T minus one. So the problem is this problem is I mentioned in the previous video. So you can just figure out what is the Laplace transform the unit step function. The first step function is just one over s, okay? And this is the step function moved to the right by uh, one. So if you use the property I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, video also, it is uh, e to the minus s one over s. That's you shift it by. So this is a still original step function. This is the way you if you shift it by one, you get e to the minus s. Okay, that's why this one is just be given by one over s minus e minus. Uh, time one of s. Okay. Of course, you can still use a definition to compute it. Let's use a compute uh, a definition to compute to see if uh, we got the same result. So let's do the unit definition. So definition says the L of f t Laplace transform of f t is integration from zero to infinity e minus s t time f t over d t. Because uh, the definition here is defined. As when it's greater than 1 is 0, when less than 0 is 0, so it's only defined if ft is within 0 and 1. So I have within 0 and 1, e minus t times 1. During the range, when t is between 0 and 1, my ft is 1. So that's why I have a replace ft by 1. Other area is always 0, so I can just ignore those. Okay. You can sort of consider this one as plus 0 to 1 to infinity e minus st time ft here's zero because ft already is dt so this is already gone so that's why i can ignore this so when we integrate over there i don't want to go to a detailed integration when you do the integration and uh, you do that calculation then it turns out you still have this you get the same result as we use this simple method okay that shows that it's beneficial sometimes to use a property and then to simplify the whole computation the whole idea is essentially we want to simplify the whole set so we can use a property and then use a table. There's a table uh, of Laplace transform. You can check it online. So they will, this will include all the basic function like the step function, the ramp function, uh, whatever function that is the sinusoidal function, for example. Those all the functions are all the different functions. We just have to use a function and probably use some property to figure out a lot of the functions we usually use. All right. All right. So last one I talk about here is called final value theorem. Okay, final value theorem talks about if I want to compute the the limit of a function with respect to t 
time as t go to infinity, okay? Then this one can be written as the limit of s goes to zero of s time fs. So which means, okay, if I give you a function, let me tell you the basic idea why uh, what it means basically. So you give a function, some ft, okay, I don't know whether it's ft, if the limit exists, so the add limit t goes to infinity of t is equal to I find a first final log let's transform this ft, okay, which is this is just the which is L of ft time s and let this s goes to zero. Okay, that's the same thing. That's what a base final value still means. Okay, it says this one is is a value which means it's true if fs, which is Laplace transform ft, has at most one pole at zero, and all, all other poles are in the open left half plane. So when I say poles, I mean by this. So, for example, I write fs is s plus one, s plus two. For example, this is a one. Okay, this is my fs. The pole means the denominator. This is my denominator, and this set the denominator to be zero. It's s plus one and s plus is set to be zero, so this is my denominator. You find this uh, value, of course, here is s minus one, s minus two. These are called poles. Okay. So all the poles, at the most, one pole that already at zero. Basically, it says, okay, if I would draw the poles out, say so this is my imaginary axis, this is my real axis. Let's plot out my poles of this f. These poles are the poles are either at zero, so it could be here, or in the open left half plane, it's like here. You can have poles here, here, something here, but you cannot have. Now, this is if you have poles at the imaginary axis or the right hand side, let me draw, use a different color. If you draw poles here or the right hand side, it has to be symmetric. So, this is the purple one, not fine. So, if your poles are always in the left half plane, or as this origin, now you can use a property. Okay. For example, let's let's do a very simple example. Let's say if I for some function f t, I don't know what it is, but the Laplace transform is one over s squared plus two s. Okay. So the poles, if you check the poles, so this is you set the denominator to be zero, right? S squared plus two s, you set it to be zero. So poles are so this is the same as s times two s s plus 2 is set to be 0. So the poles are s is 0 and s is negative 2. Yes, you have one pole at 0 and uh, the other pole is in the open left half plane. Yeah, that's correct. Satisfy the problem here. So the limit of t going to infinity ft is equal to limit of s goes to 0 of s times of this Laplace transform ft. So I already give you the Laplace transform ft, which is given by this form. So just replace this one by fs. So it's limited s goes to 0. S and this is a, so the Laplace transform of ft is 1 over s squared plus 2s. Okay, now because this one is written as this guy is s, s plus 2, so this s and this cancel out, so limit s goes to go 0, 1 over s plus 2. So limit you, you replace s by 0, so it's 1 over 2. Okay, that's where you can find the limit of ft. Okay, here we, what we can see is we don't necessarily have to know the form of ft. I don't know how to figure out what is ft. As long as I know it's Laplace transform, and as long as the it's Laplace transform has at one at most one pole at zero, and all other poles are in the open left half plane, I don't have to compute ft. I can use this Laplace transform to figure out the value of ft as t equal to infinity. Okay, so next question is when is the final value theorem useful? Yeah, why do we have to care about this one, right? This is exactly what I mentioned before. In, in some cases, we don't know how to compute ft because it's very hard. For example, if I give you a differential equation somehow like this, I want to just figure out what is my limit of my uh, xt as t equal to, now this one has to be good to infinity. Okay. All right. So, because sometimes it's very hard to figure out what is the solution of xt. Of course, if you don't know f, f solution is some function, whatever, yeah, you can find a limit. Now, in certain cases, it's not easy to figure out the Laplace transform. Uh, the the ft directly. So one way we can do this, we can first figure out the Laplace transform. Okay, we can apply Laplace transform on both sides, and then follow steps trying to figure. Hey, the solution of xt in the. I don't have to figure out this one. I can figure out what is the, this. Okay.
xs is the solution in the s domain if i can check at the most one pose of this xs is, is at zero and all other poles are in the open left half plane i don't have to figure out what xt is but i can tell you what is the limit of t as t equal to infinity which is just be given by the limit of s equal to zero of s times xs okay so the reason we use the final value theorem is so do not we don't need to compute xt while figuring out the limit of t equals to infinity xt okay that's the value because sometimes it's not easy to compute this one but we don't have to compute it if uh, the pose of xs which is l x t if the pose of x uh, the Laplace transform of x t satisfy this property then we don't have to have to compute the uh, the solution of x t okay so that's uh, the benefit using that final value theorem all right so this is the property for the uh, Laplace transform the second part